Hello everybody, I'm Walter de Koning at the University of Manitoba and I'll be talking about the creation of containers from definitions files. So as we've seen in the previous chapter, you can build containers um, in, in an interactive session by consecutively entering commands and storing the resulting container. Now in the interest of reproducibility, it is often better to write a singularity definition for the container so that you can recreate that container exactly the way you created it the first time. Think of this as the difference between typing commands on the command line and writing a script to make sure that you always enter the commands in the same way. So we're going to go through two containers that we will build through these definitions files. Um, we'll talk first about a simple example, the hello world example, and then we'll do, um, we'll write the definition for a container that actually does some physics um, analysis or that, that creates um, a plot with, uh, with root. So let's start with the hello world example. So we will be defining this container in a text file. So we'll open a text editor, I'll use nano, um, and I will open um, a, this text editor on uh, the file that will contain the definition, hello-world.dev. Inside this file, we will define the uh, container. We'll tell with the first line, bootstrap dot, um, colon docker, that this container will be based on a docker image. So we'll have to use a base image to build our commands and build our container on. Um, we'll use in particular the docker image of the Ubuntu 20.04 um, operating system. So we'll use the docker Ubuntu 20.04 as the basis for our container. And in the percent run script section of the container, we give the commands that make this or container that are specific to this container. In this case, that will be simply printing the words hello world to the screen. Finally, you see here a line with a hash character, uh, and that is the way to enter comments inside of this definitions file. So I will copy this entire container definition to my text file. I will save the text file and I will now create or build the singularity container from this container definition. To build a container, we are going to use the command singularity build and then we specify the name of the output file that will be um, the, the image that we will build our container from. So I'll use hello-world.sif, where sif is the extension for these container images. And then I will specify the definition file, hello world.dev. So as I enter this command, you'll see it starts to build. It may download um, the image for Ubuntu 20.04 if it's not already available on your computer. Um, and then it is adding this run script which prints the hello world command um, and it's storing everything in the hello world.sif file. As you can see in this directory, we now have a hello world.sif container image. And if I look at that with additional details, you will see that this is an executable um, an executable container image that we can run. So now we can run hello world and indeed it prints hello world to the screen. Now if I wanted to delete the hello world um, container image I can simply delete this file hello world.sif and there is no space taken up by this uh, container anymore. I can still create the container again at some future time based on the definition by simply using singularity build hello-world.sif, hello-world.dev again. This will build the same container simply based on the definition. And just to demonstrate that this is indeed the same container, if we run this same container, we do indeed see that we get the same output, the hello world print to the screen. Okay, printing text to the screen is of course fun, but it doesn't get us to 
uh, scientific results as quickly as doing a, an analysis. So what we're going to do next is um, do a, a bit more of an elaborate example um, by building a container that contains a specific version of root and that runs one of the tutorial examples from the root tutorial. So I'm going to um, use this definition here, which will again be based on the Docker image of Ubuntu 20.04. There is a section post here, which is what will be used to set up the environment inside the container or the, to set up the, the, um, the layers inside the container. We will update um, the, the package list. We will install um, wget uh, and then install some other uh, system packages. And then finally, um, download the root distribution and install it under the slash opt directory. There's a section that describes the environment that will be used when we run the container. We set the path where binaries will be searched for. We set the, the library path where libraries will be searched for. And we set the Python path where Python modules will be searched for. And finally, as in the Hello World script, or Hello World definition for the container, we set with the run script the command that will be executed when we run the container. And finally, we add some metadata to this container that includes the author of this container, which for this example is just going to be this HEP training example. Um, it's encouraged to add this metadata to the container so that there's a way to keep track of who came up with the original um, uh, definition for the container. So I'm going to create a, uh, a, a file that I'll call root in Ubuntu, root in ubuntu.dev, which will be the definition file for this container. And I will copy the entire content of this definitions file from the tutorial into um, the root in ubuntu.dev definition for the container. I will save this. And just as in the example for Hello World, we'll build the singularity container with uh, singularity built, and I will call the container that we create root in ubuntu.sif, and it is based on the definition root in ubuntu.dev. I will start this, but it will take a little bit longer to execute all of these commands, because as you can imagine, installing these packages takes a little bit of time, downloading those packages takes a little bit of time, uh, simultaneously or, or uh, likewise, downloading root will take a little bit of time and extracting it takes a little bit of time as well. So I will pause the recording here and we'll come back in about a minute or so. The container has now completed building. Uh, as you can see, the build is completed and this container image root in ubuntu.sif has been created. We can look in this directory and we see indeed that root in ubuntu.sif has been created. We can compare the size for this container, which will be slightly larger than the Hello World container. And so you can see that the Hello World container was about 20, 28 megabytes. Uh, but of course, root being a larger um, software tool is about 654 megabytes large. Now what we want to do is run this container, which will set the environment and then execute the run script. Um, so we will run the container using the fact that the container, the SIF um, image has been written as an executable file. So we will run root in ubuntu.sif, which will now set the environment, set the path, uh, variables that we have set that we have uh, specified here and then we'll run Python and run this Rufit um, tutorial Python tutorial um, you should see similar output as here and a output file will be created this rf 101 basic.png file will be created it is possible depending on your on your display settings 
that a window will pop up. In my case, um, you can see an error message here, which indicates that it is unable to open this window, but the file is still written as output. Um, we can display this file, which will work in my case, um, with rf101basics.png. And this is the, the file that was created by this container. Now, when we have created this container in a reproducible way by specifying the definition, we still want to deploy those containers. So um, in many cases, the container will not be as simple as what we have done here. And it definitely will be more complicated than the Hello World example we've, uh, we've started with. Um, so it may be that building this container takes a relatively long uh, time. There are certain containers that I'm working with which, uh, which, which compile multiple packages and um, can take several hours to build. Uh, now, once that container is built, it is available and we can um, host it on any number of services. Just to go through a couple of examples, there's the Scilabs cloud library that can be used to distribute images. This is by Scilabs, the original um, authors of the, the Singularity um, program. Um, but the Open Science Grid organization also provides ways to distribute images um, and host them on, uh, uh, for example, CVMFS, which is, a, um, in, in my experience, a particularly effective way of distributing these containers. Now we end this lesson with um, a little exercise here. Uh, so think back of um, the earlier chapter where you did a Pythia 8 analysis. Um, and try to take this, uh, the example, or try to take the, the code you were um, executing there and turn it into a definition file for a container that runs this um, main 01 example of the Pythia distribution. Um, I will not go through the solution here. This will be something you can consult on your own after you have completed this exercise. Um, but I do want to reiterate the main points of what we went over, which is that the singularity definition files are a reproducible way to specify how a container should be built. And once a container has been built, it can be deployed um, in, in any number of ways um, on a variety of systems um, to be run and, uh, effectively. Thank you.